Welcome into the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Appreciate all of you for being here as always. Coming up on the show, a lot to talk about following the Niners beating the Los Angeles Rams, but it's a really quick turnaround. Going into this Thursday game against the New York Giants, so a lot of people have questions, observations, and takeaways from that. With that game coming up on Thursday Night Football, we will be back for another watch party. Join us as our pregame show begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock for those of you out on the West Coast. Look forward to seeing you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Therefore, anytime we go live and anytime we put out a video, you will be notified. Let's start off with a $10 donation from our guy, Skullhead80. Hopefully that's paying homage to Jerry Rice the Goat, if that's the case. I see what you did there. Best wide receiver of all time. Do you think that Coach's gutsy call on fourth down is a sign of what's to come this season? Because he knows the window is closing for a Super Bowl championship. I think that Kyle Shanahan so far this year, I don't have much to complain about other than him keeping players in too long. And he said that he's been doing that because he's scarred from the 2021 season opener in which San Francisco took a multi-score lead and the Detroit Lions nearly came back. I understand that feeling. You got to get rid of it, right? You got to move forward. This is two years later. And now you're an even better team than you were in 2021. You have a Super Bowl-ready roster. And you're not the same team if Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. He played 100% of the snaps week two against the Rams after he was used a lot, still in the game, up 30-7 to against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's my criticism of Kyle Shanahan. But game planning, allowing Brock Purdy to be successful and comfortable running the football play design scheme system he's doing it all right now what I called for Shanahan to do and we talked about this in the lead up to the season you got to be more aggressive especially when you're deep into the opponent's territory or just on the cusp of being in the opponent's territory why settle for a punt when the net is nothing why settle for a low percentage long field goal Go for it. You're the offensive guru. You're the offensive mastermind. Get more aggressive. And we're seeing some of that from Shanahan so far to start the year. Going for it. Fourth and inches at the goal line. Couple of seconds left. No timeouts. You know what he calls Brock Purdy quarterback sneak. That tied the football game up. That got momentum back on your side. If you kick a field goal there, you don't pick it up. Rams have the momentum going into halftime. They get the ball to start the third quarter. Maybe things start to trickle downhill. But Shanahan went for it. I love it. What he also said during his Monday news conference, he was asked how he got better this offseason. And he said, I want to be mentally tougher. So throughout this offseason, I read a couple of self-help books. Shanahan isn't a guy who opens up often. Maybe he's growing up a little bit, maturing, and I give him credit for doing that because why not try to be the best that you can be? David Blanco, $2 Super Chat. Is it just me, or does George Kittle not look 100% healthy? I think that George Kittle looks fine. I think that he looks healthy. He's been blocking really effectively, and the few times that he's received the football from Brock Purdy, I thought he's moved well, and he's been really physical. Now, the groin injury might be holding him back a little bit as far as the speed goes, but I'm still seeing the same player who's been asked to be used a little bit differently. But we know that George Kittle is going to have that stretch in which he's tearing it up through the aerial attack. Sugar Shane, our guy. No Saquon Barkley Thursday night. That's 3-0. Home field essential. I think that the place is going to be rocking because I think the fan base understands this team is really, really good. And throughout the first two weeks, I think the San Francisco 49ers are the best team in football. Offense, defense, special teams, coaching, talent. They've really gotten it all so far up to this point. So, Sugar Shane, I'm taking the Niners to win over the New York Giants. 34-20 is my score prediction. What is yours? Who do you got Thursday? SF for the Niners, NYG for the New York Giants. Get those game predictions in down in the comment section right now. Coming up next on the show, more of your questions. But first, the 49ers report today is sponsored by AG1. If you use that link down below, we have a great deal for the faithful. Five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamin D with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash chatsports. If you're looking for a comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition option, AG1 is the only answer. 
I literally take it every single day, especially after watch parties. It gets me going, and it just gets me on the right track in my recovery process. Why is that, Chase? Well, I'll tell you, 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. It tastes good. It's great for you. And over the span of a month, it costs less than $3 a day. If you want to optimize and prioritize your health, AG1 is a great foundation to start with. I simply mix one small scoop of AG1 with water. I shake it up, and boom, I'm on my way. I like the texture. I like the taste. I think it's fantastic. See for yourself at drinkag1.com slash chat sports. Again, that's five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamin D if you simply click on our link, drinkag1.com slash chat sports. Roddy Cow. Wanted to take a moment to say this. Yesterday was wild. Yes, our watch party week two, it was wild. 140,000 views. And congratulations, Roddy Cal. The winner of our Brandon Ayuk autograph jersey, he was the highest bidder with a $400 super chat. A couple of others who I've reached out to to thank them. They had a couple of big super chats as well. But at the end of the day, it was Roddy Cal who got the dub and we're going to have a great Super Chat giveaway once again for Thursday Night Football. Black Mask, this team is built on defense. Yesterday was the first time in a long time we've had to see the offense win this game. And that's why I like the makeup of this Niners team, Black Mask. They're still scoring 30 points. And they've eclipsed 30 points in back-to-back -back weeks without a defensive touchdown. Now, they had a couple of turnovers of Kenny Pickett in Week 1, a couple of turnovers of Matthew Stafford in Week 2. That's for sure, and I think throughout the duration of a game, they wear you down, which then leads to some mental and physical mistakes that aid San Francisco, but Kyle Shanahan even said a couple of months ago, you know, our philosophy here, we can win with defense, and that's kind of how we built this team, and this defense is just so stacked. What's the biggest question mark on it? Cornerback and Diamador Lenore since Really, the end of last year into the playoffs is playing great ball right now. Charvarius Ward is balling. Talano Hufonga and Deshaun Gibson playing good at safety. Linebacking core is great. This Niners defensive line, multiple guys deep. They're built in a complete fashion, and that's why I like this team right now. The average Niner fan, I predict that Nick Bosa gets three sacks against the New York Giants. Nick Bosa is going to get home. And he's going to get some sacks at some point. It's a good week to happen against the New York Giants. And it's a good week, good observation here by one of our real ones for him to do it this week, considering the opponent. Because the Giants' offensive line is bad. But Nick Bosa, despite everybody thinking that he sucks so far, he's caused problems. He's been disruptive. He's caused destruction. Number one in the NFL in pass rush win rate over Dexter Lawrence and Micah Parsons. Aaron Jimenez why didn't we get LaFleur? Are you talking about as an OC? Or are you talking about as a head coach? Because if you're complaining about Kyle Shanahan through two games this year and piggybacking off of his success of having three NFC Championship game appearances in four years, I get the only goal is to win a Super Bowl championship, but he's one of the elite coaches in this league. Do you want to be stuck in purgatory for a long time? You get stuck in purgatory if you can't find a good head coach and a good quarterback. So I hope you're talking about LaFleur as the OC. Maybe you are, uh, but LaFleur is an OC. He wants to call plays, right? Kyle Shanahan calls the plays. So that's why guys go elsewhere to call plays, because Kyle Shanahan is the man with the Niners. Words of wisdom. Chase, any news on trade news? We could use some offensive line help and a defensive back cut Ambry Thomas. Ambry Thomas has been underwhelming the first two games of the season. He got benched week one, and then he got hurt after 14 snaps in week two, not that good. And his awareness for the ball, somewhat lacking. With Ambry Thomas, you know, I think back to 2021, third round pick out of Michigan, didn't play his final year at Michigan in 2020 because of COVID, but there's a good player in there. But for some reason, he's just not rounding into form and it's not translating to the field. And that was the case last year. It's been the case so far this year. You could use another DB they did work out Bradley Roby on Monday, so that could be a signing. He's a long-time corner in the National Football League. Offensive line help, I do agree. Even though the Niners played better week two, 
that could use an insurance policy there. Predict the score, Niners-Giants, Thursday Night Football. Don't forget to join us and join that conversation, as always, down in the comments section right now.